Hi everyone, I'm Belinda. Thanks for visiting my studio today. I have just finished working on a pen and ink drawing with a little watercolor of a still life setup in the studio of pears. Pen and ink is a lot of fun, especially when you mix it with watercolor, but your choice of paper will have a big impact on whether you can lift color and also the way the color mingles on the page. So let's take a look. This is a Pigma Micron 01 archival acid-free ink pen. And the paper is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper in a block. I sketched a little map of the still life of the pears with pencil before going in with the permanent ink. If you would like to try this uh, wash technique that I'll demonstrate, but you're not confident about your drawing, don't be afraid to trace a photo or trace something out of a magazine so that you can practice more in your paint application and less on your drawing skills. Although drawing skills are very important, don't be intimidated to not play with your paints because you're not confident about your drawing skills. There are other ways to get to the paint. If you're new to drawing and new to art making in general, putting a couple of hours into a drawing and then painting on it can be uh, an intimidating process. You don't want to mess up your drawing by not painting it right. So sometimes it's easier to separate the two. Just trace a whole bunch of drawings that you can practice your painting on and then practice your drawing by itself and keep the two uh, as two separate efforts. For example, you might trace a photo of three pairs on a plate five or six times and then give yourself permission to do whatever you need to do including messing up on the painting process over those tracings. And then separately in a sketch pad, you might practice just drawing the pairs on the plate freehand and practice your shading and line work to give yourself a chance to get acquainted with drawing and painting separately one at a time before you start to combine the two. If you pig pile too many steps of learning one on top of the other, it'll be too easy to give up and get frustrated and not come back to art. So you want to go nice and slow and give yourself a, a comfortable pace and that leaves you encouraged and excited to come back and do some more. I'm laying in some very bright yellows which will uh, fade back as they dry and while they're still wet I'm dropping in some earthy greens. While the yellow pigments are still wet I can drop in a variety of colors that will just travel and mingle with the pigments and create new colors. I'm using a rosemary number 12 round brush and as I drop the color in I'm using the brush to pull the pigment like a blanket to the edges of where I want it to go and the challenge here is to let the pigments move around and mingle as they do on their own and not to noodle it too much with the brush and turn it into mud. So here's a bright red I'm carrying it over to the edges with the point of the brush and the back of the brush which leaves a much softer edge and then a little bit of brown and then just let it move around and you'll see that it'll blend itself. If you're looking for inspiration on pen and ink and watercolor art, Google the name Carl Larson, C-A-R-L-L-A-R-S-S-O-N. You'll see some beautiful renditions that'll get you inspired to try some of this. This clip was filmed the next morning and you can see how much lighter all the colors have become. I want to put a shadow underneath the plate, so I'm going in with some glazing now, some light transparent colors to add some shading. This paper is really nice, but it doesn't allow you to lift color. So you want to lay in your colors transparent and light, let them dry, and then check and see if you've got them dark enough. So I'll keep moving my brush from one section of the painting to the next, adding transparent layers and then checking to see if they're dark enough. If I try to lift color here using a brush dipped in water to wet the pigment and then blot it with a paper towel, you don't see any coming off. In this clip from a video I posted a few weeks ago, I'm using plate finish Bristol paper and it lifts quite well. So if you want the option to lift, you might try that paper instead. So that was a little watercolor pen and ink piece. If you found this useful at all, please leave me a thumbs up so that I know. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments section, which is beneath the video window. And if you are interested in supplies, that's also listed beneath the video window in the show more section. 
Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos I have in the queue for you. And if you know someone who is learning watercolor or pen and ink techniques, feel free to forward this video to them. I appreciate your time. Thanks for visiting in the studio today. Don't forget to make something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.